What I know is that people who fight against do that really well. They know what they're fighting against. I think we've seen that in the last two months. And so what I've decided is we need to give them the information that they need to keep fighting against um, and keep empowering them to do that. What I know for myself is that the Democratic Party has not been providing me, the state of Idaho and our country, the positive national brand that we can go deliver our values to the people of America. And so we absolutely need, maybe more than anything else, to embrace who we are. I, I heard somebody say earlier that we are having an identity crisis, and, and I call BS on that. I don't think we're having an identity crisis. Any Democrat that I talk to will tell me why they're a Democrat. We just haven't come up with that positive message to deliver to go out and talk about who we are. There are so many people doing great work who are Democrats in our country, and we need to tell those stories. We need to find out the county chair who's doing good work at the county level soup kitchen. We need to find out the city council person who's doing a uh, minimum so wage much. bill and Ray tell Buckley. those stories. Hey, Young Turks, this is Nomi Konst. We are in Baltimore for the final DNC Future Forum. Uh, there is this, There have been a set of forums across the country, as you guys know, and we've been interviewing all of the candidates for DNC chair, vice chairs, all the positions. And we have uh, Sally Boynton-Brown, who's the executive director of the Idaho Democratic Party, and she is the president of the executive directors for all the Democratic parties across the country. The National Association of Executive Directors, yeah. That's the proper title. Yeah. It's actually the ASDED, so Association of State Democratic Executive Directors. How long have you been an executive director of the Idaho Democratic Party? Uh, about five years. So I've been with the party for six. I was the field director and then the communications director and then became the executive director. So you understand what it takes to manage a party in the states. And for those of our viewers who are unaware, uh, this, this battle is not about Hillary versus Bernie versus Obama. There's definitely balance elements of that, but it really is about the states and the states not having the resources uh, to organize, to, to integrate programs that they want to do, uh, to register voters, to train candidates, all the things that you need to do to win in the state houses. Um, and the debate has been about where's the money going? And you have been talking a lot about money. What was most surprising, the most surprising thing that you learned as you've been campaigning over the past, you know, several weeks? Well, I think that uh, the most surprising thing that I've learned is that there's just a lot of people that don't know the inner workings of the political party. I don't think that we have done a good job of really getting out what the purpose of political parties are. Um, and so people have this idea that we are something that we're not. Um, one of the things that I talk about often is being able to get the DNC to refocus on its purpose because in past decades, it's been important that we had an organization to elect the president. And I don't believe that we can afford for that to be the purpose of the DNC anymore. And so I really talk about returning to a service-based organization really because that's what the people are demanding, right? They're demanding that they have more transparency, more accessibility, um, more inclusion than we've ever seen before. And because we talk about it in our values, people assume that we have it, um, but we actually are very old school kind of, I always say like we're a 19th century party and we've updated some things, you know, in the 70s we did some updates, in the 90s we did some updates. It's really time for us to come down to the foundation and say, okay, it's the 21st century and we see this new power dynamic at force in our society as a whole and we really need to have the conversation about what's a political party do in the 21st century? How do we organize? And so so my blueprint, which is on wethednc.org, really has us coming back down to the foundation and rebuilding from the foundation up, answering that question. I believe we need to be an innovative, resilient, service-based, you know, 21st century organization to meet the needs of a 21st century electorate. When you have 50% of our country choosing to sit out and not vote, and you have 25% of our electorate voting for somebody like Donald Trump, that should, tells, that should tell us that there's some big issues there, right? And um, I'm not saying that there aren't things that we've done in the past or that we're not currently doing that doesn't work. That's, that's not, when you look at the tactics, right? Then pu let's put all the tactics in that work, but let's look at the need first. So, uh, you know, the, the dynamic within the party right now uh, from the outside, 
those not paying attention to the inner workings of the party, the funding of the party, uh, the budget of the party, which is not transparent, which, you know, we've talked about a lot. They would think it's just Bernie versus Hillary. And with that, uh, we've been asking members, okay, so if it's not Bernie versus Hillary, how do you bring these two sides together? Are you getting support from both sides of the aisle? Yeah. So before I even got into the race, right, I was having that conversation because reconciliation is what I do. Uh, you know, I have a communications degree with an emphasis on conflict management. And I think that there's really great opportunities that come through effectively doing conflict in a positive way. And what we saw, unfortunately, in the last year is that um, people in our party don't know how to do conflict. And so really uh, fundamentally taking this down to power, right, which is what my platform is all about, is giving power back to people, I feel like it's under all the divides. Because it's not just the Bernie and Hillary divide. We have an urban rural divide. Being from Idaho, right, I hear from the rural states all the time. They don't feel like they're a part of things. There is a ton of people who we would consider, most of your viewers probably would consider insiders who don't feel like they have any decision-making authority in this party. It's time that we remind them that they're this is a democracy right they have a vote they have power and so everything that I talk about is bringing back new power principles not bringing back bringing new power pr principles into our party so that we are fo focused on being inclusive being collaborative and being transparent that is what new power is all about the old power way of doing things where you've got a few people with connections making decisions in a back room somewhere you know even in this race we I've had people implying that they think somebody's going to strike some deals and then the people aren't going to actually get the chance to vote in Atlanta. And I keep saying, mm, I don't think so. I, not with me still in the race, because that's not how I do things, right? And I've been having conversations with other candidates and members saying, no, this is a democracy. The members get to decide. And I've had people ask me all sorts of uh, really interesting questions. Um, one of the, the latest was, well, when are you going to get out of the race? Um, you know, like we we know you're not the front runner, right? So how are you? What are you thinking? You know, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I'll get out of the race when the democratic process takes me out of the race, right? We have multiple rounds where my voters, you know, will vote for me until it looks like I'm either the winner or that I'm the last person, you know, on the ballot with the least amount of votes. And it's not for me to decide, like I'm not striking any deals. That's totally antithetical to like everything that I've been talking about. And so those new power principles, um, they are what is the great equalizer, right? When you give power back to people, it gives power to everybody. And if we give power to everybody, right, then you use the democratic process to make decisions. When we're trying to hoard power and we're trying to affect outcomes, that's when everything breaks down. And that's what people are frustrated about on both sides, frankly, right? Um, the superdelegate issue is not a Bernie issue. There is plenty of Hillary supporters who are frustrated with that issue as well. It's, it's been debated. I mean, that's a lot of things that people don't realize is, and, and that's not gonna solve. The superdelegate problem will not solve the thousand seats that were lost. Right. That is a presidential thing that comes up really only every eight years, and it's only come up in the past, you know, past eight years right. with Obama and Hillary and Hillary uh, versus Bernie. Super delegates, I, I completely understand, and the Unity Commission is going to deal with that. Uh, but you were talking about hoarding of power, right? So when it comes down to taking power away from those who've been hoarding the power and giving it to the people, that's going to require a lot of, of tricky navigation and work. And I'm going to go back to the budget because one of the things that we've been focused on is where is that power going right now? And if, if people aren't winning, if there's a lot of money being spent and a lot of money being raised, more money than ever, yeah. where is that money going? Where is the, where is the money going? At, where are the people hoarding the power? So, first of all, I want to correct you on something because new power is not about taking power away from anybody, right? When we stand up and we own our power, you can own your power, I can own my power, there's no taking. Collaboration is an exchange, right? And when you take the currency out of a power situation, which is the, the essential uh, change that happens from moving from old power to new power is, information is no longer currency, money is no longer currency, as ironic as that is, right? Ultimately, it ends up being the people that are working together and the information and the ideas and the money is flowing through a system. It's not being, you know, uh, taken up by one side. So it, it really is having this fundamental uh, understanding of how new power operates, which is, is really fundamentally different. And information, so making things then available to everybody is key, right? So the budget, 
is a piece of information that shows our values. It shows our priorities as a party. State parties all show their budgets to their members. The DNC needs to do the same thing. How do we stand and say, yeah, the DNC is in alignment with our values if we don't get to see how we're spending our money? And we do get it reflected out in the world, right? We see it being spent on consultants. We see it being spent on media. We see it being spent on like fireworks and all sorts of crap that like does not win elections. Actually, true thing. There were fireworks being, <laughs> and they didn't even use them. Uh, but you know, that that's, that to me is the essence. So the budget's not transparent, but if you go through FEC filings, which we've done, you, you're able to track where this money goes through an alternate direction. Right. And there are a lot of this, a lot of this money, and it's a lot, is being spent on a couple of consulting groups that are, are getting percentages of ad buys and, you know, polls that get, you know, really early polls that may not indicate anything. And it, it seems like it's becoming a racket. Like this is the Democratic Party where you, it's a fundraising factory where the money goes to the consultants that lose the elections. Right. So, you know, y even if you were to empower the people, y how do you lessen that stranglehold on the Democratic Party that those consultants have at this at the central level? So let's be really clear that it, by empowering the people, you're giving them the information and you're giving them the democratic process to be able to make those decisions themselves. So I'm fundamentally talking about giving decision-making power to those folks in our party to make their own decisions. You know what? At the end of the day, if they decide that they want to spend all of our money on consultants and fireworks and like as the chair, honestly, that's not my job, right? We have a democratic process. We have members of the party. Again, though, I go back to, right, if that's what they decide that they want, then there are people who elected them, right? This all goes back to precinct captains because every single foundation of our voting block starts with precinct captains who are elected by voters. We are a democracy and we give our power away. We do it every single day. And we saw 50% of our country give their power away by choosing to sit this election out. And they could have impacted this election in a different way. They could have impacted the primary election in a different way, right? And so when I talk about, when I talk about power, it is always gonna be reminding people we're in a democracy. Democracy and democratic principles are the foundational power that our country was based on. And if we, don't remember that politics is not about money, it's not about data, it is about people and relationships, then we have completely failed to learn the lesson that we needed to from the past. And that is that we have gotten in this crazy world of technology and 21st century organizing, we've forgotten that people exist at the end of this and that voters exist. And voters have forgotten that they have power. And so everything that I've been about for a decade, right, has been about coming into this democratic system. And I saw the Democratic Party is the best way to do it to remind people this is a democracy and democracy only works when you participate and voting is just the first level of participation right and so what i'm trying to really encourage people through this whole campaign for chair right is to remember we vote every single day for where our priorities are we vote with our voice we vote with our dollars we vote with our feet and you can look and see what the outcome of this election is and you can empower whoever the next DNC chair. If it's me, my whole plan is about giving the power back to the people, right? Decentralizing every power that we have, all of our bylaws, all of that stuff, right? If it's not me, you're going to have the ability to hold that person accountable. And I think the wonderful thing is our country's waking up and seeing this. It is sad to me that Trump had to be elected president for that to be the case, but we've got millions of people out marching right now, and if that's not power, then I don't know what is, right? And so the question is, is, is the Democratic Party really gonna wake up and get that? Because they're doing it with or without us. They're going to march, they're going to protest, they're gonna participate, whether we get in line or not. If we don't, we miss out on it. And I don't know what that means for our future. I am not gonna, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm running for chair to make sure that we are able to harness them and make sure that they have the support and services to be the powerful entity that we know the American people can be when they engage in democracy. And I do think there are a lot of young people in particular who maybe before this past election, this presidential election, were not engaged, were not registered as Democrats, identified as independents, like 70% of young people under the age of 30 said they were independents. That to me alone should have been a red flag to the Democratic Party. Yeah, when people are registering as, as, as independents, in some states, you know, it's the majority, like Arizona, there are more registered independents and Democrats are, are Republicans. With that being said, there's some work that needs to be done in the Democratic Party in the next couple of months that's actually on the calendar. Mm -hmm. 
there is the Unity Commission. That is a, it is, it's an effect of the, of the presidential primary. The, 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 the Democratic Party had a rules committee meeting. They put together a document that the, the Unity Commission, where um, there's Secretary Clinton and, and, and Bernie Sanders have put forth a bunch of nominees to go and sit on this commission. And then the chair will also have their choice of candidates to set the rules for the party. Now, my question is very specific, and I ask this because I asked uh, Secretary Perez this earlier today. One of the chairs of the commission that is supposed to set the rules for the future of the party is a partner in one of the largest consulting firms that associates with the DNC. How would you deal with that, given what you just said? So I think that it's very important that we um, look at all of the potential conflict of interest that we have in our party. That's not the only one. Um, and we need to have a conversation about how we let good Democrats, right, be involved who are doing progressive work and in making sure that they don't have undue influence. It's really important that when we're talking about access, that we give access to the homeless person who has no money but has great ideas, right, as well as the person who has a ton of money, as well as the person who is helping elect Democrats and making a profit off of it. So they need to have access, but not undue influence. I, there would be a serious problem if the Unity Commission was filled with people like that, right? There, that's possible, though. Yeah. There's quite a few members that have contracts with the DNC when you look at the member list and lobbyists. So I haven't had the chance to look at the member list. You're saying the DNC member list? The, the DNC member list. I the, the, okay, so Secretary Clinton hasn't put her um, her her nominees for the Unity Commission okay. yet. It's just the chair uh, who happens to be partner at one of the largest right, right. firms. Um, but you look at that in the executive committee. Uh, you also have people in the executive committee who are being investigated for campaign finance issues, yeah. for fraud. Uh, you know, you look at these ranking members of the party and there's a real problem. Right. There are people under voting investigation, campaign finance investigation, who sit on banking committees and have had, have had investigations on them. And these are the Democrats that they're propping up, not to mention those who sit on the firms that are making money off of this. Right. And a lot of people don't see this because a lot of reporters don't cover it. But you as chair, I mean, how do you, that's the culture. That's the culture. So you clearly know more about this than I do. So I'm, you know. You'll figure it out very quickly. I was going to say, I'm trying to catch up, right? Um, I, I will say that the Unity Commission specifically, I've got three members that I get to appoint. And the three members that I would appoint are people who are about revolutionizing our party, returning 21st century kind of organizing tactics and new power to the party who are regular people, right? I'm a regular person. I don't have power and influence. That's one of the reasons that I ran for chair to say, people, like, if you have vision, if you have the answer, step forward and lead, because that's what we all need to do right now. So those are the folks, you know, that I would look for. Because one of my concerns is, is the Unity Commission is not a new thing. They did this in 2008 as well. They tried to Done it back in early 80s. Yeah. Um, it, it, so this is a problem that it did not originate here, right? It just exploded here because it's been a problem for so long. We have to fix it. And so one of the things that I, that I said about the Unity Commission was I started shopping around and saying, does this does this do it, right? Like, are we really trusting that the, this group is going to get it done? Now, I was told by people who worked really hard to get the Unity Commission, we fought hard for this, we need that. Like, please don't blow this up, right? Um, and so that's fine. I trust them. I wasn't around. I wasn't negotiating all of that. What I will do is make sure that my three members will make sure that this problem gets fixed because it's absolutely unacceptable. If we are going to go try to claim to be um, in alignment with our values, we have to clean our house up, and that means addressing everything. Um, so moving off of the Unity Commission, one thing that I uh, call for in my blueprint, which again, it's 11 pages long, and it is very um, focused on the how. How do we accomplish this, right? So please do go on my website, wethednc.org, and take some time to read it. Um, super entertaining bedtime reading for everybody, I'm sure. Um, it's a grievance council. The grievance council is uh, made up of members who have, you know, past judges, past conflict management people, past mediators who have no no position in the party. They have nothing to gain, um, but they have the skill set to really look at um, the grievances that people have. So that these people who are under investigation and complaint, right? or people who aren't following the rules in the state parties um, 
there's meetings that are happening that nobody knows about, even though they're supposed to be public. There's, uh, you know, all sorts of people saying like, oh, well, the old guard folks are trying to control the outcome of the election. They're appointing. I mean, there's all sorts of issues out there, right? It, the Grievance Council is designed to be able to take those complaints and address them. Mm -hmm. They go out, they investigate them, and they make recommendations on what needs to happen, and then they make that information public. Again, when you're not hoarding information, when you're about giving everybody the information they need, right, that's true transparency. And so really, really important to me that that Grievance Council is is something that happens. And again, you know, I, I see a lot of, you know, my colleagues up on the stage who have taken some buzzwords from me and have adopted a lot of the things that I'm saying. They're not adopting my ideas. And we only actually make transformation happen if we're focused on the how and if we're actually asking the um, beneath the buzzwords, right? Tell me how you actually get there. And so, um, you know, I have... Uh, I limited myself to the 11 pages. My team and I had a conversation like you don't want to overwhelm people, but I also wanted to show like I am the person that knows how to do this. I've done this for organizations. I am an organizational development person. So when you're talking about changing the culture, you go back down to the very beginning and you say, what kind of culture do we want to have? The people have spoken. They want a transparent, collaborative, inclusive culture. And so that's what we look at. Every document, every employee, every elected leader that we have, are they passing mustard, right? And then we use the democratic process. It's not my job to fire people, right? Unless it's my job because they're staff. But like, you know, a lot of the hard pieces of our party is because they're elected officials. They get elected by the voters, elected by the precinct people. So we need to remind them, like, if you're not happy with it, here's the process. Here's how you recall somebody. Here's, you know, how you make a complaint. Like, we need all of that. But the, without the grievance council, none of that was possible. Essentially, you just get to take to the internet and complain and hope somebody listens. That's unacceptable, right? We need the process. So that's why I put that in there. Sally. Great, great conversation. So um, if anything, these ideas are strengthening our party and so many of our viewers have are new to this process. I mean, yeah. this, this election brought in so many new voters, so many disengaged voters, dis disenfranchised voters, right? Well, well, we'll definitely follow up. We'll be, we'll be in Atlanta next or in two weeks. Um, good luck Thank the rest you. of the race. Can I just say two more things? Sorry. So one of the things, um, you were talking about independent voters, right? I don't think that we're going to convince millennials to want a label attached to themselves. It's not like, oh, the Democratic Party's failed me, so I don't want to be a Democrat. There is plenty of that. I, so, yes, yeah. there is that. But regardless of that, we could be doing everything great, right? And they still are not going to want to be a Democrat. They're going to want to be independent because it's just how they roll, right? They don't want those labels. It is important that we're looking at how we function as a party, right? And one of the things that I've said um, is that I think we need to ha look at open primaries, right? Idaho has an open primary. The reality is, is that the majority of voters in our country are independents now. And we're totally missing the boat when we say, nope, only register Democrats. Now, I agree we need to have protections in place. We do not want to just wholesale open our party up to anything, right? We have a core set of values and a core set of issues that need to dictate what that looks like. It needs to be a democratic process. People need to talk through it. Um, but I have a work group, you know, de designated uh, around that for people to have that discussion. Anybody can join my work groups. They're totally open to the general public. Um, they kick off this week. I think we have like 150 people who've signed up for them so far. If I had 2,500 people talking about how how we open up our party to independence, like I would be totally stoked about having that conversation. If I had, you know, a thousand people talking about climate change and how the party leads on climate change, I would love that. Like, so, you know, for any of your listeners, please, again, go to my website, look at the different work groups. We've got 13 of them. Um, I'm happy to entertain more if there's something listed there that folks don't want. And I want to engage every single person into the decision making structure that is the DNC and really take it out of the hands of a few powerful people that get to make all the decisions and spend all the money. Thanks, Sally. Yeah.